Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Just Acting Up show. We got a very, very special guest here in the building, Miss Tina Fields. Clap it in, y'all. I like that. That was. already <laughs> started. Man, I love it. I love the energy. I love it. How you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Doing good. Happy to be here for sure. Thank y'all for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Bright and early like the orange juice, man. So let's thank go. you. So let's get it. Let's get it. So man, I was reading over everything, your titles, what you've done and everything. And I was like, whoo, we did say that it is a woman's appreciation. Wait, woman's appreciation month or what is it? Yeah. yeah. Month, 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 you know, all the things. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ma'am. Yes. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you are she. So, um, first and foremost, let's go ahead. Let's start it off. Um, so, is tell us a little bit about yourself. Now, is now I know Tina Fierce. Is Fierce your 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 original last name? Because that's a dope. That's last my name. that's my legal. If you if you in the Google, it's gonna yes. it's gonna show it's gonna show up Fierce. That is my married name. Yeah, that yes. is my married name. So it just kind of worked on brand with what I do. Right. Tina Fierce, fearless, all that good stuff. But yeah, that's that's. When I became a fears 15 years ago, that is my name. Yep. I love that. That's a dope last name. Man. I, Thank you. I love it. And you are originally from the ATL. Is that correct? I'm originally from LA. I'm a California girl with sweet tea in my veins. So I've been in Atlanta longer than I was in Los Angeles. So I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> I like the way that's I'm with sweet tea in my veins, man. Yeah. I love that, man. Let's go ahead and get into to your career and your business. Like, what is it like having your own business and then also being in the uh, acting industry? Like, how did it all get started? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I come from a creative background, a, a family of singer, dancer, artist, all that good stuff. So that's like many artists have always done all the things. Um, and then I, you know, as I was kind of like transitioning through college, decided that, hey, I got to figure out a way to make all of these things that I do really well work for me, you know? And so I kind of went into entrepreneurship before it was on trend to be a big boss. You know, I kind of decided that I'm going to bet on myself and start a stage ready with very little and, you know, kind of built my resume like we all do, whether you're in the arts or, you know, you may have a food truck or whatever your business is, a podcast, you kind of have to create your own momentum, create your own narrative. And so I started the business. We were blessed to work with a lot of clearly God-ordained people because my resume didn't really match up to the clients that I was able to secure. But once I got the jobs and proved myself, you know, then it kind of all made sense. So we were blessed to get some great clients early on. You know, we worked with Usher's New Look Foundation, a lot of NFL players in the early years. Mm -hmm. A lot of gospel artists and then we started adding like BET and MTV and VH1 and all those people to our to our client list and um the rest is kind of history within all of that I kind of remembered the root of who I am I'm able to serve in the entertainment industry because I have those gifts myself and so probably really about seven years ago I came out from behind the scenes and started pursuing my career as a performer um mm. you know you know a lot of us who have gifts sometimes you kind of wrestle with that what does that look like can I make a, a living in that place I've seen failure so you get fearful um but about seven years ago I started to come out from behind the scenes and did, did professional musical theater in Atlanta and have been able to kind of cut my teeth in that space and move on to do commercials and television and film mm, beautiful beautiful <laughs> love that love that man so Let's um, let's let me see. I was looking at when we looked at everything that you've done, mm -hmm. and we we're saying that the one thing that really stood out to us is that you know, through God, like you just you always giving grace to God, giving thanks to yeah. Him. That really stood out to us. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm an unapologetic, faith forward woman. You know, yeah. um, beyond the looks and the you know and all the all of that relevancy. Yeah. I am unapologetic about knowing that one, there's a call on my life Two, um, that everything that happens for me, doors that are open doors that close, like I have to lean into really wanting what God wants for my life. And that looks different for different people, but I have seen God come through for me in ways that an agent, uh, a plug, a this is that and the other they They don't have the, they don't have the bandwidth <laughs> to yeah. make those things happen. You know, so I've seen God do such wonderful things that 
I would be a foolish woman not mm -hmm. to give credit and lean into that because this is a very volatile industry that I'm in. You know, these are, you can go and do wonderful things and then not work at all. You know, you can be um, on a job and then the show gets canceled. I mean, there are so many different things that I can't, you can't put all your stock in just that. You have to be grounded and be rooted and know that as you go through the ebbs and flows of your career, even in business, that you have to be able to lean into something greater. And for me, it's my heavenly father. So yeah, I'm, I'm you know, she is, she a holy girl summer, you know, we're going to do a holy girl summer. We're going to be saved and fly and all of that kind of stuff. But um, yeah. I have to constantly give give grace and thanks to to my heavenly father for everything he's done for me. So you got that right. I'm glad that's what the narrative is saying. She's saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it too. Cause I was like, cause we always say it all the time. Cause we, as tall as we were, we always got to give, like you said, give thanks to, to the man upstairs, give thanks to God. Yeah. Cause without none of this, it wouldn't be possible without him. Right. And so I'm going to ask you, being a, you know, being saved and everything, what's mm -hmm. the two gospel songs that you can listen to that get you in the spirit? I, I want to know this. So you want a buck shout? You want a da 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 You hey, want what, that kind of or wait, just a worship? Your, hey, glory. Hey, <laughs> what's up with <laughs> Well, you know, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I like. I, I, I came up like I was a choir director and like a praise and worship leader. So yeah, I was like a choir director in Koji Church for a minute, like okay. community choirs, like all that kind of stuff. So we came up listening to like John P. Key, Fred Hammond, Ooh. the Clarks, like that kind of yeah. stuff. You know, okay. you know, I'm, I'm not that seasoned of a woman, but you know, kind of like that when gospel okay. kind of changed over, like it went from traditional, like the Hawkins, to like when Kirk and them first started to kind of make yeah. it a little more contemporary. So that's yeah. what I kind of grew up listening to. A Ricky Dillard is gonna always take me up. If I just need a, a certified bump, church yeah. bump, anything, Ricky Diller for sure. Fred Hammond to me has always had one of the most wonderful pins as a uh, gospel artist. But now the new generation, I feel like Jonathan McReynolds is kind of giving us what Fred Hammond kind of gave in the 90s. So I love Jonathan McReynolds. He has a song called Details. It's a beautiful worship song. Mm. Um, I think Kirk is going to always kind of give you that smile whatever you need in the midst yeah. of you know Kirk can do that but I used to actually choreograph and um, create a direct for Dietrich Haddon many years ago and he was always one of my favorite artists I think he's one of the best singers ever doesn't really get the credit that's due um and so a Dietrich record are always kind of like take me up to so yeah y'all got my y'all got my church background as well I love it amen yeah that's beautiful I love it I love. Uh, what about y'all? What do y'all? I mean, who do y'all listen to? Oh man, see, I'm like the, I'm liking the new, uh, the new artists of the day. Like we have like a uh, like Cannon Jones. Yeah, I, mean, I, I used to work with Cannon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this man, she owned it, man. <laughs> been in these streets. Been in these streets. Yeah. Been in these streets. So Canton Jones, you like Canton Jones? Do y'all yeah. listen to Christian hip hop? Y'all listen to any Christian hip hop artists like oh, Lecrae, yeah. Wan Day, and all of them? Yeah, I my, love my, my, yeah. Um, I like that. What's the guy? Um, he's like I call him like the go the young gospel hip hop T Pain. Um, okay. Uh, worship yeah. till I pass out. Worship. Uh, oh, Uncle Reese. Reese. Uncle Reese. Oh, Uncle Reese. Yeah, yeah Uncle Reese. I like his music yeah. too. Yeah, Uncle Reese. And then there's there's an artist named Wanda, y'all, who is giving what like City Girls, Cardi would kind yeah. of her producers are good friends of mine. And okay. she went viral. Um, she kind of flipped some different like Bible stories with wigs and stuff on. Y'all might have seen it if y'all are y'all into culture like that. But her name is Wanda, and she's always in the, in my stories. I use her music for everything. So eh, 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 eh. if anybody okay. looking for a y'all need to clock oh, yeah. into Wanda because she's she's very dope. Yep. Okay. Okay. I like that. I, okay, Wanda. I gotta look to see. Yeah, what she check is. her out. <laughs> she made that sound for me too. Now, now we've um. We've seen your commercials, but you also have okay. usually talents for cartoons, right? Yeah. And so we want you to just kind of share your experience in the voiceover space. Man, thank y'all for that. Voiceover is actually my favorite. Mm. So really? as you know, yes, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. I'm really praying that more doors open up for me in the voiceover space. So you can hear my Southern neutral, like my neutral tone, but I've been really blessed to know how to kind of flip it back and forth. So um, I was able to do the voice for Global Problem Solvers, which was like an animated educational series for Cisco. So it was kind of a, the combination between 
um, Captain Planet, and it was like a <laughs> black Miss Frizzle, but my name was Miss Kibble, you know, so I was able to do that, which was really cool. But then I also do a lot of commercial voiceovers for like the Home Depot and Walmart, mm. um, a lot of pageants and things like that. So that is really my heartbeat, believe it or not. And it's because I'm a singer, right? So as a singer, I know how to kind of flip my voice. And mm. based on my placement, that that's going to give you a different tone. You know, sometimes they want, come on, home, come on down to Cracker Barrel. You know, and sometimes they want, thank you for calling AT&T. You know, they want you to kind of flip it up. So you have to be able to, you know, flip it with your voice as well as the pronunciation. But vo voiceover is definitely, that's my heartbeat. Because I feel like if nothing else, honey, if this mug break down, <laughs> put me in front of a mic. <laughs> <laughs> put me in front of a mic you know oh. so and, and there's some wonderful voice actors mm -hmm. who Cree Summer you know she set the tone really yes. when it comes to voicing for, as, as a woman of color Yeah. so yeah I love voiceover work and I had a great time working on that animated series been with Nickelodeon several rounds y'all so pray for me one day that door will open up but it's been good to get in those rooms lately that's a, I can hear you, you talk about it. That just like lit you up. You're like, that was so that's that's it right there. I love voiceover work. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't notice, yeah. I didn't know that about like for singers, like it does make sense now that you know we can change all our voice to these different characters and everything. With it. That makes yeah. sense. I'll be doing a little I I can sing a little, I can I can do a little bit of something, something. I can do a little something. something, something. Like you know about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always saying some little crazy character voice or whatever, mm -hmm. but I, now mm -hmm. it makes sense what you explain that to me. So yeah, yeah God bless you. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, tap into that, brother. You never know. Yes, ma'am. Most definitely, most definitely. So when you are not, you know, being a queen of your empire, your business, and we do want to hear more about that. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you doing during your downtime? Downtime is trying to be the best mommy and wifey that I can be. You know, mm -hmm. I don't really know what downtime is per se, oh, but man. it is always, yeah, it's always trying to find that balance, you know, figuring out how to best serve my family and make sure that that my commitment to them remains constant. The, the, the way that our home flows is consistent, even when I'm juggling a bunch of things, like even coming on, they knew I had an early morning, you know, I've Dinners are cooked, food is prepped, whatever. Went in and said good morning to my son, my husband, of course. And they mm. knew I had this going on this morning. So the downtime is cooking. You know, I love to mm. put a pot on. I love wonderful food, you know, um, hosting, spending time with my family, you know, getting in the gym, trying to keep it tight. But, and, yeah. and really community has been helpful for me. You know, coming off the pandemic, y'all, we were in such a space of like isolation and the unknown. So to be one of my girlfriends calls us hashtag we back outside. So if there's a conference or there's a opportunity to connect and physically be with people, I'm trying to lean more into that because sometimes, you know, you, you kind of can isolate yourself. And I, don't, I think we forget how much we need to interact with people um, to be whole. So that's what I'm doing in my downtime. Now, we can't overlook uh, that the fact that you won a HAPO award and use us on screen recording the event. So I know that was... Uh, you know, a while back, but we just want to have yeah. to acknowledge that because that was Thank some great work you. on that series. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was unexpected. You know, um, Mr. Courtney and Miss Angela are people that I, I think we all admire. You know, tremendously. Yes. So it it was a master class. You know, working on Genius Aretha and being able to recur as Claire Ward. And then, you know, when the HAP Award for it, and there was a, another acknowledgement that I received from Black women in film in New York, just to come in and make an impact in that role, you know, where the series was really about Aretha, but the way that the team put all that together, mm -hmm. Anthony Hemingway and Susan Lori Parks, our wonderful producers and writers, they leaned into the people that supported Aretha's story, you know, and so they made room for people like, a Claire Award, you know, they made room for the people in her family and her siblings. So it was a blessing to be able to not only be on the show, but to sing. So those performances of Claire Award, that's me actually singing. So, okay. you know, it's like, uh, hello, Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let me give you all the things. So they gave me room, they gave me space and they didn't have to, they could have used someone else's voice. So thank you for acknowledging that. It was a wonderful experience. And Mr. Courtney is just as gracious and kind and uh, in a spirit of a mentor. Like what yeah. you see in his interviews, like it's consistent, y'all. And a lot of people are not like that. 
And I believe that's why he and his wife are so blessed because they are truly, mm -hmm. you know, when you work with them. Sometimes, you know, you work with people and it's a little, you know, so for him mm -hmm. to give me compliments on my choices and mm, okay, that's nice. And now I'm like, Courtney B. Ban said that was nice. The <laughs> choice was good. Right. You know, let's run and shout, you know, like it was yeah. that. So it was yeah. a very challenging space because I look back on it. I'm glad y'all asked about this. I look back at it now and I think I should have leaned more into really maximizing what that was. And I would never mm. be on a show and a job and not be completely, totally present. But I was just in a place in my life where you have been auditioning so much just to get the job. It was like, okay, I got the job and I got to do the job and I got to do it well. But yeah. really to soak all of that up, you know, for the people who are watching it or other artists, man, when we get on these sets, y'all, soak that yeah. stuff up. Make those yeah. connections. Make, you know, of course, don't be obnoxious, but really right. make sure that you're giving your all and your, your true authentic self, not just when you're on the camera, but amongst your castmates and peers and all that good stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was it was a beautiful experience, one I'll cherish and prayerfully I can work with him and, and a lot of those other people again, really. No, it it really showed like that's one of my favorite series that I seen come out. I was like I was telling James, yeah, I'm like, you need to watch this. This is so good. Like I've watched the movie, no disrespect to the people that did the movie, but that okay. series is just so good. I was like, no, this is the story. Thank and you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think with the series, you I mean, you know, in all fairness, you just they had several episodes to kind of unpack so much yeah. more and be so much more detail oriented. Whereas with the movie, you kind of got about what two hours max to yeah. tell this story. But I'm I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Glad y'all enjoyed that. Yeah, and and I love what you you said, what you touched on right there, saying that um when you on these sets and everything because everything moving so fast, so quick. And we tell ourselves that when we're on set or we're writing or creating something that we really need to slow down and really marvel at what we're doing in the moment. Yes. Because like, it's going quick, quick, get these lines, do this, look at this mark, get over here, make sure they have everything is correct. But then when you get down and you look at that person across, like, I'm really talking to Courtney B. Vance right now. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I'm sharing the screen with this person. So I'm yeah, I'm happy yeah. that you say that right there. Yeah, yeah. And, and Cynthia was so complimentary. She was so kind. Yeah. Um, when I came back in episode six as the older Claire Ward um, during the Amazing Grace stuff, that was my first time working with her. And, you know, these, again, these are, these are, you know, award nominated, Tony Award winning people who are seeing you doing your thing, you know, because when I'm on set, I'm not like, oh, this is Mr. Courtney, that Cynthia. It's like, no, I'm in Claire Ward zone, right? I've done mm -hmm. the research, I prepared, I want to honor that this was a real person, you know, so in between takes, you know, you're coming over telling me like, that was dope. That was fantastic. You know, that that really means a lot. It's very validating. Because again, we come from the land of no's, y'all. We submit into the void as actors. You know, you take yes. and you send into the void. So again, soak that up, y'all. Mm -hmm. You also have your your own fearless movement, right? But you're also mm -hmm. co-founder co -founder of uh, Black Eight, was it Black ATL? Black ATL. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, in one of the many ways you give back to the community, uh, how important is it for you to, to give back? Oh, man, it's everything. It's everything. We started the conversation talking about how I started Sage Ready, and it was out of a necessity, right? I was transitioning from Clark Atlanta and had these educator dreams. I was cheering. Shout out to Cheerify. You know, I was doing all the things, but that, that, um, that journey wasn't lining up for me, and I had to pivot. And mm -hmm. so and when I was in that pivot, there were things that I needed, right? I needed mentorship. I needed resources. I needed funding. I needed um, sp spiritual and emotional encouragement and uplifting, right? So I want to be to people everything that I needed. And I got those things later on. But if I can just take what, what knowledge I have just in my little experience and put that in front of people now, why not do that? So with Black ATO Inc., we're a service organization that was really curated specifically to serve Black artists here in Atlanta. We have about almost 400 members in that organization via our Facebook platform, but we are the intersection of service as well as the advocacy piece for actors in Atlanta. So Atlanta is a right to work state. Um, and so there isn't anything specifically for Black creatives. It's almost like an NAACP, but for Black artists in Atlanta. If I may say that, because some, yeah. you know, in addition to the skate parties and all of the live stuff like that, we had a major issue throughout the pandemic with the 
I call it the great awakening. You know, everybody wanted mm -hmm. to get super woke, but there were conversations that needed to be had as it pertains to what the black artist experience looked like in our city. Atlanta is as black as it gets, but there was still a huge disparity between what the opportunities look like for black artists, wages, um, jobs, just the environment in which you're treated. So black kind of I wasn't initially founded like that, but it really was just myself and my co-founders and other leaders in the community just saying like, hey, we need to be a voice for these people. I'm willing to sacrifice you not giving me a job to speak up mm -hmm. and call you out on how my brothers and my sisters are being treated. So Black has been around for a couple of years. We helped to facilitate the largest artist protest in Atlanta during the pandemic with thousands of people marching on Atlanta to bring awareness to all of this. So yeah, and then the fearless movement is just me being my testimony, my fearless self serving black women, you know, serving young girls who were just like me who need to be uplifted, you know, in their lifetime. Love it. I love all that, man. Represent, represent, man. A few more, um, just a few more questions we get you out of here. Yeah. Um, so now you mentioned that, you know, you for this, I think it was a musical film, Mm -hmm. You got to use all your gifts on Georgia Sky, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Now, yeah. what show is out right now that you would love to be a part of that you can use your gifts that you haven't done yet? What show? Ooh, what show is out right now? Mm -hmm. That can use your talents. I'm just trying to see. It's so many, friend. It's so many. I think, I think yeah. the show that would really be all of those things has yet to be written. Ah, okay. A couple years ago, we had shows like Glee and um, yeah. uh, what what else was it? There was like another one called like maybe not Star, yeah, Star and shows like Star, that. Which, really, yeah, you know, Empire that they mm. had the music piece was kind of wrapped into all of that. Yeah. I would love to, to be on Abbott Elementary. I think me and everybody else would love to be on Abbott. Yes, yeah, I can see that. You know, as a dance teacher or music teacher or something like that, um, yeah. I think at elementary would be wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. There are, I, I love period projects, you know, so there's a couple of period projects that are being shot right now that don't mm -hmm. necessarily lean into the singing and dancing, but mm -hmm. I'm a big historian. I love Black history, Black culture, so I would love to you know, be someone in the 40s with a, this time with a cigarette and a, uh, you know, <laughs> a glass of dark liquor, you know, yeah. I did, I gave you 40s, you know, church lady, gospel singer, yeah. but I would love to kind of give you a little club woman or something like that. So I think it's yet to be written, but there are so many wonderful projects that are going on right now that I know it's just a matter of time before my next opportunity where I can bring everything together will yeah. show up for sure. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, they say speaking into existence. Oh, yeah, every day. We, every yeah. day, y'all. Yeah. Manifest that. You know, yeah. Disney doing you know Disney doing those live action movies. Now you can cook, you can dance, and everything else. Man, you better say it. You better Princess say and it. the Frog, man. <laughs> Princess Tiana. Tiana. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, now. Look, Tiana, give me a little ponytail. That's, I'm that's glad my, you said it. Yeah, that's my favorite print. We're going to manifest yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, I would love to. Way. I would love to audition for that and, yeah. and just 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 be just be considered. Sometimes just being in the room is good because right. being in those rooms, even if you don't land that, it just allows you to be opened up for other opportunities. So yeah, I could give you give a little Tiana with the little tendrils and the hair and the ponytail. Amen. You know, a southern accent, y'all, what y'all need, huh? Come you on, know? man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, next time they put one of them fan casts together, y'all make sure y'all drop Tina Fears in there. Oh, but um now uh before we let you go, uh I yeah. just want to know. I mean you've Grace magazine covers, you work do work in front of and behind the camera, got your own business. Do you ever plan on writing in a book about your journey? You know what? One day. There's going to be two books. There's going to be a cookbook mm -hmm. sooner than later because the food content going to pop, y'all. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I just love it so much. It does really well on social. So there will be a cookbook. But one day I do I do plan on writing a book. Um, not sure if it's going to come from a memoir place or just like a, here's some tools, you know, for along the journey. But yes, there one day will be. And um, I don't, I'm not sure when. Sometimes you feel like you got to live so much life before you can write a book, but we know that's not true. It can be a continual thing. You know, I can yeah. do one and then, so, yeah. Thank you for encouraging me to get my pen out here and get this book together. We, we just manifest everything. Yeah. 
Y'all give me y'all y'all don't know how much y'all are blessing me this morning. I appreciate it. We appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Um, last question, then we'll okay. just drop and get you up out of here. All right. So, so as talented as you are, and you know, you have all you know, we all have to retire someday. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to accomplish when it's that time for you to retire? Yeah. So when it's time to sit on down, which I don't yeah. really know if I can totally sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I would have really just built a legacy of being a total artist. Debbie Allen mm -hmm. is someone that I admire so much Ooh. because she, she's a singer, dancer, actor, producer, director. And then you have this Dada Academy, right? And mm -hmm. so it, 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 I would envision it being something that's full circle where the things I've accomplished before retirement would have allowed me to ultimately open up this academy, open up this studio where people can be trained and that I would be someone that, yeah, Tina Fears, the way I look at Miss Angela and the way I look at people like that, you know, Tina Fears, I saw her, she was doing animations and she was, you know, she played on this series and she did that and she was a doctor here and she spoke this, you know, I, I want people to, to be able to glean from my experiences and just come from an authentic place. So legacy is important to me and I hope it's one that is a positive one and one that's encouraging. So that's my point. Love it, love it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Tina Fears. They, uh, tell us where we can uh, find you at. Yeah, I'm at Tina Fears on all platforms. Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter, you know, all the things. And then TinaFears.com <laughs> on the web. <laughs> yes, man. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Tina Fears. Many blessings you, to you and everything that you do. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for having me on.